Hi everyone! I'm pretty excited. I have some news. Finally, finally, we've arranged my workshop in West Virginia. It's going to be in Bunker Hill, West Virginia. And the studio that I'm renting is amazing. It's going to have up to, I think there's four or five or even more shooting stations. Various set designs already there and in place as well as a white, completely white background or whatever. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus strictly on using continuous lights in this workshop because the type of things that you can produce with continuous lights is something that I think a lot of people don't really know about and don't try enough. So that's going to be the main focus is continuous lighting instead of strobes. Additionally, the environment, so the landscape surrounding the studio is lush and green and beautiful. So we're going to do some shooting outside as well. I'm going to have up to four models, I believe, so that once I go through my demo, then I'm going to divide you into groups and you're going to be able to shoot to your heart's content. Keep in mind, there's only going to be 10 participants for this. I like to keep my workshops relatively small. And right now, if you purchase before the middle of May, it's going to cost you $1,100 US. After May 15th, it's $1,500 US. Now, when you go to my website to sign up, just keep in mind that the dollar value on my website is in Canadian dollars because I'm Canadian. So I'll just put the US amount above in the description so that you understand how much. It's about $1,100 US right now. So I hope to see you there. I know it's gonna sell out fast. So please hurry up and book your spot. And I am so excited to see you in June because I haven't actually taught a workshop in just about three years. So I can't wait to see you. So go get your spot. Hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate how I use my Photoshop brushes. I know I've had a lot of requests for this. So I thought it was about time and once again I am using a portrait of my granddaughter. Why? Because she's pretty much the only person I shoot nowadays so I happen to have a lot. So I've already done some some tweaks here. I'm just going to pull the blacks up because I can see they're clipped a bit and the shadows a bit more and pull those highlights down right about there. I'm also going to reduce that temperature just a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to go into my masking tool, select the subject, and let's see, not bad. Usually does a pretty good job, but I can see that it missed her hair a bit here, but I'm not really going to worry about it. Invert, and I'm just going to reduce the background a little bit. Right about there. That's good. I'm just going to go ahead and open New Smart Object View Copy. Double click the Smart Object icon and I just want to bring those hot spots on her little face down a bit. So yeah, that looks a bit better. And then it also gives me control over my shadows and highlights, right? Um, I'm not going to bother with doing the retouch. I will show you my final retouch at the end of this video, but for this video, I'm just going to show you how I use my brushes. And I actually have a new brush that I made for specifically for her hair. So anybody that has curly hair, this brush is going to be super helpful. But what I want to do before I do it or use it is go ahead and select my subject. I always like to cut out my subject when I am using this hair technique because I find that it just really looks more realistic if you do it this way. So I'm just going to bring back some of her hair that wasn't selected here. Make sure you get all of the little flyaways like so. It doesn't have to be perfect because our little hairbrush is going to do most of the heavy lifting. 
I'm not concerned with the selection everywhere else. I'm only concerned with this. And what I'm going to do is go up select modify and I'm going to smooth those edges about four. And now I'm just going to hit command J and now we have, we can work behind her head. So I'm pulling that blank layer underneath. And I'm going to right click and choose, this is my new curly brush right here. And typically what I do is I'll choose the darker color here. And then the nice part about having it behind your subject is that you can actually affect those areas in behind, which is nice. I always select the colors, the darker colors in the hair. To create the shadow base. And then come over top of that shadow layer with your lighter colors. And it's great for filling in gaps and stuff like that. But I want this side a little bit darker because it's way darker on the shadow side. Okay, now I'm going to do a new layer right over top here and I'm going to start increasing the brightness of the hair. Just little tiny swirls. We're going over top of the hair now. We're going to just add a little bit of additional hair strokes to make it blend with the ones in behind. And I'm going to do one last layer of rim light, just tiny ones, like so. I don't have this brush up in my shop yet, but I will do that this week. And then you can just reduce your opacity to suit. Okay, so that's how I use that brush, that hairbrush. I'm just going to go ahead and flatten now. And then what I like to do is duplicate my layer and come in to filter, liquify, and just shape it a bit more. Like so. And then if you really wanted to, you could go in and highlight it and do all that other stuff, which I'll probably do in the final edit. Um, but let's demonstrate my foliage brush. So this area here is too light, so I'm going to add another layer. I am going to use my multiply, change it to a soft brush. 
my flow is at about 34 and then I can just darken down this color and you saw that I actually selected that color as well. Okay, right click and these are a lot of the foliage brushes that I use and I'm probably gonna use the Leaf 3. I use this one often and I don't want it to be too light. So I'm coming in and I'm choosing relatively what look like darker colors. My flow is at around 34. And if you use this over really dark areas, like I said, it tends to work really well if you use a more mid-toned. And it uses the two colors, so make sure you choose your two colors when you're doing this technique. And they're really pretty and I just think they look pretty realistic and you can get some really good techniques and looks with this brush. Okay, and that's just using the one layer and you can see how it affects that. You can also reduce it if you feel like it's too light. I like to come back and then adjust the color schematic so you can see there's a lot of red in this so I'm going to actually choose this red color here keep my other secondary color right there and just add in a little bit of color a bit much If you're wondering, this backdrop is from Backdrops by Mayhew. He's, I believe, based out of Connecticut, and I adore his work. So because I want to brush off some of this, you can just, it's easier to just use a soft brush. Make sure you reduce your flow down so that you're not taking away too much of it. But this will just fade in a bit, especially if it you know how sometimes it spreads a little bit too much onto areas that you don't want so just come back and brush it off like so okay just gonna go ahead and flatten and new layer and let's see what other fun things we can do with our brushes. This one here is probably one of my most used ones. I'm gonna use this color here, and I'm only at a 12% flow, but then you can just start pulling in a little bit more foliage into the background without it looking too terribly noticeable. I'm just pulling it up because I feel like that was just too subtle okay so don't be afraid to apply digital art techniques to your portraits I think that it will just help your work look different and more unique Now, of course, you, you need to start doing your retouch and stuff. So I'm going to stop it, do my retouch stuff, and then I'll come back and finish it off. Okay, so now I have done the retouching on this, and I have also applied a, a blur gallery filter and made sure that our subject was not part of the blur. 
And I also did some dodging and burning on the backdrop to get this look. So now I'm going to show you what some of my other brushes do. So brand new layer and we're going to, let's use the bubble brush. We're going to use a light gray color and I like using this when I have subjects like her, she's looking somewhere. So I kind of want to place the major bubble right about here. So that's what that bubble looks like. And I tend to like to put these bubbles on their own layers only because then I have far more control, right? But for these ones over here, I won't bother. Okay, so now we got a few bubbles that she could be looking at and you can just add little pieces like this and those are bubbles and they're so cute so those are the main ones you can reduce the opacity down here you can also try to change the color an easy way to change the color let's do it on this big one is just double click the layer choose color overlay for this one I'm going to use like a blue something like that or actually because she's got a red outfit on we can do a red so just choose whatever I'm going to copy this color so that I get the same color for the other ones so let's go to this one, double click, color overlay, and it should default to that one. Same thing. And now you have some red bubbles, which is fun. So I'm just going to put these in a group and call them bubbles. All right, new layer, right click. Now I will show you how I use, and I really like this one. This one is, I actually did this for digital art for when I, when I create little uh, creatures and stuff. It's kind of cool. It's like spider webs or cracks or something like that. So I'm just going to undo that, and I think... I'm going to change the blend mode on this layer to color dodge, double click the layer, turn off transparency shapes layer, click OK, go down to the reds, and then I'm just going to choose this color here. I'm going to reduce my flow down to about 19, and this should help make these look a little more magical. And don't worry about it going over top of the bubbles too much because it kind of looks cool. And these are, you know, these are digital art techniques not commonly seen in the photography world, but I love combining both techniques. I just, you know, I, I'm into the magic of it all and I love how using digital art techniques you can create really kind of magical images but I really love this brush it's super fun to use and it looks like she's quite enthralled with with the uh, bubbles which now look more like floating magical orbs <laughs> Um, what else can we do? Let's see. Um, yeah, and that one, NH Cracks, it's not out yet. This one is a scatter brush. I really like it. Again, I use it for magic styled stuff. I'm going to do the same thing. Color dodge, double click, turn off the transparency, and then I'll show you how this one works. So you just kind of touch around. You can make them bigger. If you use your mouse as opposed to your stylus, you can just hit dots. And because this is 
a color dodge. That means that anytime you touch these lighter layers, it's going to really glow. But yeah, super fun for making fireflies or fairy lights, anything like that that you want to do. I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to turn that there and then I'm just going to add a couple points of light around these little bubbles. Yeah, so just play with them, like really use your imagination, especially when you're working on, you know, images that are more magical like this. But for the most part, I typically use most of these brushes for building my environment and my backdrops. Um, I use this one, which is a damask brush, and I like to use this one for creating textures on, on fabric. So I typically will rotate my, my image and place this in varying directions because they do tend to only have a couple of directions on its own. And then once you do this, if you're creating these little fabric patterns, then what you can do is just change your blend mode and you can decide if you want overlay, hard light, soft light. So now if I change my blend mode to overlay and then reduce it, it tends to look pretty legit. It's pretty cute. You can also do it like here on her jacket. But it's a, it's a fun little tool to create patterns that are not already in your image. Okay, so that's that one. I've got a dragon scale one that I use for digital art too. It's super fun. Uh, this is a texture spray. Sort of interesting. We'll just use this red and I'll show you what it looks like. So you can imagine if you were building again in digital art, if you were making a little creature, you could just turn this into the fur. But you can see that her little coat is kind of furry. So I'm gonna reduce the flow, choose this color, and then you can see that what I can do is actually create a little bit like a fur coat. Makes it look kind of poofy. And actually pretty good for filling in these gaps here. If you're looking to create like a fur coat, but you have these wrinkles like this, it's a nice way to minimize them. I just tend to sample colors a lot as I go because I find that it looks a little more realistic. But yeah, if you want to create a fur coat. Okay. So I 
think the main thing is is to just think outside the box and do what a lot of artists do who are watercolor artists they'll do like a swatch and they will just experiment and play with the colors and see how they work so you can do the same thing with the brushes so that you have your little brush swatch and you can see what effect it is you're trying to create with said brush like for instance this part of her collar is kind of faded from the light so grab the darker color don't worry about getting it on her face because you can brush that off but you can even add it so that it kind of comes up like so same thing here But don't forget that Photoshop comes with all the brushes you could ever possibly need. You don't need to buy brushes. I tend to make my own because I want specific uses out of them. But by all means, go into the Photoshop brush library in Creative Cloud because there are so many. I'm sure there's many just like this too. I'm just going to add a mask really quick so that I can take it off her little face. I'm going to leave this here because I think it works. But do you see how now it's got a fluffier, more painterly feeling to it as well? And yeah, like just, I'm going to turn the bubbles off for now and this layer, but just come in and just play with the foliage. Like this grass one is one that I use for fur and I use it for fur often. I'll just show you what it looks like. Actually, let's undo that and I'll show it to you with a white color. So you can see how that would be great for fur especially for composite work, because that's going to nicely just clean up a bad um, cutout. Okay, so that's all for today. Until the next video, I'll see you guys again.